Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll. Welcome to another episode of In The Mix. I'm really excited today because we're gonna start something new, something we've not done before. We're gonna start the mix process for Diamond Dixie Without Your Love from the raw tracks, and we're gonna bring you guys along step by step through the mix process. Today, we're gonna start with drums. Baby, you told me you love it. Hey guys, so I'm in the mix room, uh, bright and early on a Wednesday morning here, and I have Diamond Dixie uh, pulled up on the faders, and this is unmixed. We're doing something a little different. We've had multiple requests for, instead of showing you know, what I did to a sound after the fact, of watching us dial it in, you know, in real time. You know, wh how, how did we decide the EQ on the guitars or the drums or whatever. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a multi-part series um, on the mixing of Diamond Dixie, uh, without your love, and we're just gonna just it, we're, we're just gonna document the process from beginning to end, and pick out some little things here and there to uh, to to show you guys. So, um, what I want to do first, this is a, a a completely raw track, completely unmixed. Other than the fact I have went ahead and set some relative levels and some panning positions, um, that that is done. But I, I want to give you guys an idea of the raw sound. It's I just listened to it um, before before we started rolling. It sounds great. It's uh, an ongoing part of our episode of using, uh, or of our series using almost entirely warm audio gear, and uh, showing the incredible you know quality that we're achieving um, with uh, with their products. So um, this is as tracked. Okay. Okay, so it's a lot of fun, high energy, just like the, the ladies themselves are. We had, a, we had a really good time recording this. So let's start breaking it down. Like I said, it, the relative levels are, are already set, no plugins whatsoever. My, my pans are already set. Um, other than the fact you see this trim plug in here, and that's just, uh, we got a second Pro Tools system capturing, um, you know, capturing the output of this, and uh, it was really hot. So, so we had to trim that back, but, um, that you know is is the song in its raw form. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to bring in a template and pass everything through um, some some outboard I have chosen. I've got the WA273s over here, and I'm going to have three buses. I'm going to have a drums bus. You know all the drums and loops are going to be going through those as inserts just to hit those real transformers. Um, I have a a, a what I call instruments or not drums bus. That's gonna be the guitar. This is a very he a guitar heavy song, as well as a couple keyboard passes are going through there. And then there's a third stereo bus, and that is my vocal bus. And uh, that's gonna be hitting another 273. And those will be combining on the, on the stereo bus, uh, you know, to create, you know, that, that, that is the stereo bus, basically. You know, that's the three groups that get sent there. So anyway, let me do that real quick. One hour later. Okay, so I have all my template stuff imported. You'll see it's, um, I, I, you know, I already have uh, my effects, you know, sends that I'm maybe, you know, likely to use on various things. You see I've got a drum send, you know, a plate send, um, you know, uh, parallel compression, parallel distortion, different kind of plates, all that kind of stuff are already in place. So rather than creating a knob, if, I, if this electric guitar needs a little spring re reverb, I, I, I have it, I have it right there. Okay, when I'm mixing modern music, you know, music that really needs to hit, top 40 country, top 40 pop, things like that, um, even though the vocals are the most important ingredient, no one, no one uh, you know, argues that, um, it's the fact that they are the most important ingredient that I want to create a perfect bed for them to lay on top of. So I start with the band, I start with the music, and um, what I find is sometimes there's things hidden, you know, little little special moments inside of a guitar track, a piano track, a keyboard track, you know, some kind of a ghost note thing on a snare drum or a, 
uh, intricate you know thing on a hi hat that I wouldn't hear if I had the vocal just screaming and sitting on top of the mix the whole time. So once I know you know I have a good grasp of the song, I mute the vocals, focus on just the music, finding all those little moments, all those little nuggets, and and um, working on that stuff to create a nice consistent bed that when I lay the vocals on top of it. You know, all that is perfect. All right, so my foundation to build on is is what I, you know, the best I feel like I can make it. So let's just start diving in. Okay, I um, I decided on this song um, for the sake of the sound of the attack. I have actually already layered in a kick sample. We, we got a great sound that day, but um, I, I didn't feel like the attack uh, matched exactly what I was looking for. So I'm gonna um, start with some tape compression here. Play with and without it, bypass it. You'll hear it in, uh, and, and you can you can see this curve how it's uh, you know kind of tightening up the bottom end because this sample's got a lot of bottom end. You can see the difference in the input and the output too. You'll see about how much you know of the attack of the transient I'm shaping. I like that pretty good. I'm going to bring up my standard go-to thing, a SSL type you know 4000 for the uh, EQ. I may not need any more attack, but I'm gonna go ahead and identify it so it's just a matter of boosting it if I, if I decide to. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and start with it a couple dB up. Uh, d that, that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like it needs any compression for the sake of dynamics or even the, um, the transient. You know, I'm getting as much outside thump as I want out of this kick drum. So I'm not gonna use the outside kick mic. Uh, a lot of times I use that, I, I roll off um, a lot of you know, the higher frequencies and just use it for the thump, but th this sample has as much thump as, I, as, I'm gonna, as I'm gonna want. Little, little uh, right, right around 900 cycles there's something I don't like. I'm gonna reduce that just a little bit, and then the, the top end and the bottom end that I like will be uh, more apparent. Okay, a great sound of snare drum as is, just a tiny bit of EQ making it a little bit better. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna use any compression at all because I've laid in some snare samples. So really the, the natural dynamic of this drum and the variations from hit to hit is, is actually gonna um, work to my advantage in this case. I am gonna set a noise gate. Okay, that, that's a little, some, some of you guys may think, well, that's, that's just a little tight. He's cut, cutting off a little of the sustain, but I'm gonna add quite a bit of it back in um, uh, with parallel compression. So that, 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 for this you know, particular moment, I think, I think I'm in pretty good shape. Okay, I like that. Let me get a little snare bottom in here. Add a, just a little snap out of that. Probably, and I've already checked phasing and all this stuff. Uh, we checked, of course, that day. Uh, everything, we're in, we're in great shape.
I like that quite a bit. Let's, uh, I'm gonna move right to the overheads. I wanna hear them by themselves for just a minute. I should say, I'll uh, let you know that, um, that, of course, the kick is a sample, but the, that snare drum is a um, uh, SM57 on the top and bottom uh, going into the WA73 preamp, just a little EQ, and we, uh, uh, for, for compression, I had the WA76, um, slowest attack setting, fastest release setting, and um, you know, just, just moving the meter you know, to about one dB. Uh, on the VU, we, I, I, you know, if you're if you're getting a VU meter to move one dB, you're getting more compression than that, actually. But that's that's what we had going on. That's the the raw sound you were hearing. Very very little EQ. It's a great overhead sound. That's the WA84s small diaphragm uh, condenser mic going into the WA-412 microphone preamplifier. No EQ, no compression on the tracking day whatsoever. That, and it's a, that's a great sound. I, I've been uh, thrilled with the 84s on overheads. Okay, I'm gonna do just a little transient shaping while on the, uh, like the cymbal crashes and stuff. I wanna hear just a little bit of that. Okay, I like that quite a bit. Now I'm gonna bring in some EQ here. We got the uh, SSL 4000, and you'll see something I want to point out on, on this particular plug-in. They modeled the, you know, the um, the harmonic content, you know, the the analog character, if that's what you want to call it, of se like 72 different modules. It's something crazy like that, and it, it the, the the difference from you know selecting like channel seven versus eight and all that is very very minor. However, as you use a lot of this plug-in across a big group of tracks, you start hearing those subtle differences make an impact on your mix. So take time in your template to, to you know, go one through 30, through 40, whatever the case may be, you'll, you'll be glad you did it at the end of the day. All right, let's do just a little EQing. And I'm gonna do a little compression too. Fastest release possible, about three to one, nothing too heavy handed. I don't mind if the 6 dB light hits up from time to time. It, it's all, and it varies from song to song, you know, how transient rich is the material. The, the, the WA84 is a transformer based microphone that does its own great job of rounding the transients for me. So I don't need, you know, super heavy handed compression. The dynamics are reasonably uh, where I want them already. For some of you, you know, that, that are a little more inex or less uh, experienced that kind of wonder when we talk about drum, multi-track drums and phasing, I'm gonna flip the phase on the uh, snare drum and make it incorrect. And I want you to hear how the bottom end of the snare drum gets so much thinner and kind of goes away. This is the kind of stuff that we look for on tracking days. We try to make sure we get it right. But if you're you know, dedicated to mixing and you're mixing other people's tracks, that, you know, when we talk about checking phase, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. So th this is good as is. So I'm gonna flip it after two hits and you'll hear that the bottom end of the snare drum seems to just kind of disappear. Massive difference. So that's the kind of stuff we take, try to take time to, you know, double check uh, as we're mixing snare drum in overheads, the kick drum in the overheads with the rooms, the tom toms with the overheads. All that stuff needs to be, um, you know, you know, squared away at this stage to make sure it sounds, you know, at its best. Okay. I think that sounds really great. Let's, let's get our hi-hat going. Okay, for the hi-hat, I had the WA-84 going into a WA-412. No EQ, no compression whatsoever. Okay, I'm gonna add a little high frequency content, nothing crazy. And I'm gonna, I am gonna use the fast uh, attack um, compression on the 4000 channel strip here. You 
see when the snare drum hits, uh, I, I want it to trigger just a little bit because you, if you want, if you look at a hi-hat tra track, sometimes there's some pretty transient rich areas uh, depending on how they strike it. So that's just gonna kind of keep him, you know, dialed in just a little bit. You see my panning here, I've got him just a little off center. I don't, I don't really go to the extremes on my drums. I, it's just not a sound I like. I like, you know, like some of my acoustic guitars or uh, electric guitars to be really, really wide. And for them to sound really, really wide, some other things have to sound a little more, you know, a little more narrow. So I don't like Tom Tom hits being, for example, now this is a personal decision, you know, hard pan. I like them uh, just, you know, a little wider than, than mono, for example, but, but nothing crazy. You'll see on my panning here, I'm probably gonna do something about like that on the Tom Toms. But what I'll do is I'm gonna listen to them in the overheads and see kind of where they are naturally and kind of put them in that area just for the best, um, you know, the best tone and phasing and everything else. Okay, yeah, that, that, that right there is gonna work really good. All right, so the Tom Toms is a WA-47 Junior, a new favorite of mine on Tom Toms, going into a WA-412 preamplifier and then into an API 550A EQ. So let's, uh, let's just bring up Tom Tom one and see what kind of work we need to do to him. I've already taken time. Uh, my assistant has actually already cleaned, um, cleaned all the space between the Tom Tom hits for me. So I, um, um, I, I keep, you'll see in a playlist, I have you know, the unedited track underneath it in case you know, I ever uh, want to get back to the original and, you know, for, some, for some reason. Let's, let's put it on loop and check this guy out. Okay, that's about what I'm looking for right there. Let's hear a little EQ on it. You know, there, there's debates on subtractive EQ versus additive, and I actually use a combination of the two most often. But on drums, Tom Toms especially, I often start with a cut on what's ugly before I boost anything that I, that I like. Let's start right there. I'm not going to use any EQ, uh, I'm sorry, any compression yet. Well, let's check out the, uh, the next drum. Hear those two with the overheads, make sure our phasing is good, make sure they stay nice and fat and they don't thin out. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That's a good natural sound. I'm, I'm gonna start there. I can always get bigger and hypier later, but, but the, I think that's a, that's a good starting spot. Okay, let me uh, bring in uh, my uh, mono room mic. We call it a kit mic, trash mic. There's all kinds of names for it, uh, but, but it does a really cool thing. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like by itself. Okay, that's a ribbon mic, a Cascade ribbon mic into a WA-73 preamp with a WA-76 compression. I think it was eight to, uh, the eight to one ratio. Um, I believe the, uh, we had the fastest release and the attack was, was around, um, if I remember right, it was around nine o'clock. So that's, that's the sound. It's just a little trashy based on the fact that it's a ribbon, not a lot of high frequency content and compressed pretty, pretty heavily. Okay, let me, let me push play on the, the raw tracks we have so far. Bring this guy up underneath it. The cool thing that it adds, you, you can really hear the ghost notes, like in the verses, for example, you'll really hear a difference in the intricacies on the snare drum. And it's, since it's real mid-ranged focus, it's, it's, uh, I just really like what, what it does. Yeah. 
you hear that massive difference? This time I'll start without it, then I'm gonna add it and listen to the, especially the ghost notes of the snare drum, the, you know, the soft hits in between the back beats. Okay, so a little of that guy goes a long way, but he really, really makes it feel like, you know, real drums in a real room, uh, which is the case here. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna add any EQ or compression at this point on that track. I, I don't really feel like it needs it. I might do a real, real narrow Q uh, low end cut um, to, to the way it's matching up with the kick drum, but I haven't decided yet. All right, so I, I'm gonna point out the, these room mics are our WA-87s and Omni, uh, about eight feet out from the drum kit in that, in that room. And they are going through the WA-412 preamp no EQ at all. However, we were uh, a little heavy-handed with a 1178 compression, uh, Yuri, a vintage Yuri 1178. So you, you, you know you probably heard on the raw sound that that compression. That's what you were hearing. But I feel like we could go a little bit more. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do just a little EQ work here. All right, you see I have the fast attack setting on. I have the fastest release possible. My ratio is only about three to one. I might get a little, little more heavy handed than that. Let's hear, hear that in the blend. Okay, that's, a, that's about what I'm looking for. I'm gonna do a little trick here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up just the little stock EQ that comes with Pro Tools here and I'm gonna find this frequency that I'm wanting to, to, to it, the way it's interfering with the, the kick drum, uh, I, I wanna di you know, dip it a little bit. Let's try that one. That's the one, that's the one. Good raw sound. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start bringing in these uh, samples. And you'll notice he, I did not overpress, uh, over process the snare drum. So you're probably thinking, wow, that's not as impressive as I thought it was gonna be. I'm leaving myself room to add these samples. And the reason is, when I start had adding in the heavy compression and things like that, you know, the hi-hat bleed and things that are coming up in the, in the real snare drum, for example. Let's say I really want to get some crack out of that snare drum, bring up some high-frequency content. I'm bringing up the natural hi-hat with it, and sometimes it's just overwhelming, you know, in courses when they're playing loose. So I can add a sample, and it's got some nice um, crisp attack, some high-end, and, you know, uh, supplement the real drum with that, in lieu of, or instead of boosting the high frequency content on the original drum, if I'm planning some heavy compression. Hope that makes sense. So let's uh, let's kind of bring these guys in, and I, I may just use one of them, but um, I use two of my favorite go-tos for this type of a of a song. So I'm going to play you the sample by itself. It sounds great uh, in there with the track. You probably heard what it was adding. Okay, and then here's the second sample that, that I may use, may choose between these two. Yeah, I like that a lot. So let me bring in, I've got a parallel compression track. Um, I usually uh, use something different, but just for the sake of speed, uh, I'm gonna use this um, BF1176. This is just an 1176 freebie that comes with Pro Tools. So this is gonna be my parallel compression track. So I'm gonna start with just the snare drums hitting this track, okay? Okay, you hear the massive sustain I'm getting, the explosive quality. That's raw, here's with the, you know, the, the compressor. Okay, so let, I, I like that a lot. Let's bring that up underneath our unaffected drum bus and see what we're getting.
I'm going to take some of the sample, uh, a little less sample, um, because I, I'm getting a little more of it than the real drum, and I want a little more of the real drum just for the sake of uh, uh, realism. Okay, now that I'm hearing everything, you know, uh, where the sample's setting, I, I am going to add just a little more high end to the snare drum. Okay, that sounded great to me. All right, so I also layered in a couple uh, hand clap samples. Um, if you listen to country music, that's a, you know, fairly popular production technique on the more modern country. I'm not trying to make it pop per se. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, make it sound like a clap along. Really what I'm trying to achieve is we have a, we have choruses and we also have a verse um, and that the, the have full backbeat. And I want the choruses to lift and have more energy than that, than that verse, not just in volume of the snare drum, but in the tone and the explosiveness of it. So I'm gonna use some hand claps that, that I'm getting some, you know, white noise, some burst, some length out of. Not, not a, cla not an old-fashioned clap along. So let me show you the samples in the raw form. So that kind of a thing, and then here is uh, clap number two. It's got a pitch bend in it. I love pitch bend, but both of those you notice have have some length to them. So let me bring in uh, snare uh, uh, clap number one. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. I, I don't think I need any EQ or compression on him at all. Um, here is uh, clap number two. Okay, right off the bat, I, I love the pitch bend, but he's he's extremely transient rich. So uh, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run down here to, let's see, plug in Alliance SPL, transient designer. Uh, based on a hardware unit that's really a valuable tool for stuff like this. So let's let's really turn back that attack. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, before and after, all right? Now you'll hear the attack is rounded. Let's uh, set the final levels of these two guys. I think that, that, that'll be cool. It's, it still sounds like a real drummer playing a real drum set like, like it is, but just a little uh, extra impact and excitement. Okay, so I think I have the drums in a really good starting spot for now uh, to start building from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off for now, let you guys get on with your life, and then I'm going to come back next week and we're going to take a look at adding the bass guitar, some bus treatment, and some things like that. Alright guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't already, remember to follow Warm Audio on all their social media pages. And maybe take a minute to give them a big shout out for all this great educational content that they're providing. Also, follow me on my own pages at In The Mix With Joe Carroll. Now here is Diamond Dixie singing Without Your Love. you think that I'm crying over you And still hung up on every word you'd say Cause boy